Alrighty. Sorry guys, I'm still trying to figure all of this out. But I'm just going to start. And if I pause, just know that I'm also doing my church administrative work at the same time. <laughs> but um, yes. Let me pull this up on the computer. Oh, wait. Hi, guys. <laughs> Let me just see the comments. Hey, sis, Liat. Uh, let me approve before I start. So no one misses out. Hey, okay, um, y'all gonna have to help me pronounce names. I'm not the best with pronouncing names. So, is it Roshia or Roshea? Tricia, Trice, I'm, I'm terrible at these names and I know who you are because I, 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 we communicate a lot. But yeah, I apologize for saying your name wrong. <laughs> hey, and... Okay, I think I'm ready to rock and roll. Just, I'm trying to email some of you guys as well at the same time. <laughs> but prayerfully, this is not a super long. Hey, is is it Mika? I'm, I I gotta get I gotta get these names correct. <laughs> Liat sis, I'm trying to make sure I'm ready when Bishop go live at the same time. Pray for me, sis. Pray for me. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm just going to pray that this works out and I don't get too distracted. But yes, let me just check my phone, make sure no one texts me. <laughs> um, okay, so someone just cash up me. I'm going to have to send you the study notes immediately after. I'm going to try to actually do it now. Oh, okay, this is, yeah. I didn't think this through properly. You guys know I'm I'm back at doing these Bible studies. I actually missed doing these studies with you all. Um okay, yes, yes, yes. Gotta get back to that. Okay, let me start rambling. Hey Tammy. Hey Natasha. Can you guys see well enough the view of the words? Because on my phone, it looks blurry. I'm not 100% sure what's going on. I have a new phone. If you guys saw my YouTube video with the update and stuff like that. I have a new phone, so I'm trying to figure this out. It looks blurry on my end, so I want to make sure it's not blurry on your end. Okay, yeah, it's a little blurry, right? Let me see if I can zoom in. See, that's the only thing I don't like <laughs> about Facebook Live. They need to figure this out. I'm actually going to... Hey, sis! <laughs> but I'm actually going to tell you guys which Bible it is I'm using in a second. I can't find the sleeve for some odd reason. Like, it's missing. Um, it's literally the same Bible though. It is, okay, let's see if I can, I think I auto-focused it automatically when I was setting up. So is this a little bit better for you guys to see it? I don't want to exit the video because then that would make me start over. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm going to figure out this autofocus because I know this was a problem before when we were originally doing Bible studies with the autofocus going in and out. So I have to figure this out with Facebook. Prayerfully, you guys can see it well enough. Um, we are going to be going through the complete Psalms 1 today. And I'm going to explain why I'm going through it, what's been going on, um, as well as the Bible. So the before I get into that, let's, let, me, let me pray a sin before I get into everything else because I'll get sidetracked. 
and I don't want to do that. Did I exit? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Trying to do everything at once. Yeah, it's definitely Facebook. I don't know. We gonna have they gonna have to figure that out ASAP. But let me quickly just pray us in. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity today and tonight to just come together to fellowship and to commune and to study your word, God, on this Good Friday. We are here just to dive deep into your word so that we are able to grow and mature in our walk. And I pray that everyone is edified from this study. I pray that you speak through me as I teach your word to your people, God. And may we have a blessed evening on tonight. Amen. You guys know, short and sweet. Y'all know I still get nervous praying out loud. I'm working on it. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so it's been a minute since I last came on and did a Facebook Live Bible study. And if you guys follow me on YouTube or Instagram, you know what's been going on with me. <laughs> but I decided um, that I wasn't going to just sit around and wait because I really wanted to finish up John. You guys know we started John chapter, we did John chapters 1 through 5. And I really want to get through John. But John is a very massive, massive book. Um, more so, it's really just the chapters are very, very long with like 54 verses, 72 verses. And you guys know that I do my personal studies of what we're going to study. And then I also restudy it in a way that is I'm able to sort of teach it to you guys so it was becoming a hassle with everything that I do and then in the midst of this insane pandemic we're dealing with things got crazy so yes God has a way of just changing things up and I figured instead of me just sitting around waiting to get through John and making excuses of why I can't do a bible study why not just go through the psalms um especially since we're going through this hectic time right now um just give me one second oh, i really just want to email you ladies that have cashed at me right now but i can't uh this sucks but um i don't know what happened but yeah so i decided just to walk through a few of the psalms and i do have the image posted already in the group as well as on instagram um they're just going to be the shorter psalms i know that there are some psalms that are super super long uh Yep, see, administrative work. Give me a second, guys. <laughs> I have to get my church administrative work going. But while I'm doing that, and before I begin, I'm going to keep talking. But, um, yeah, I just, I, I really wanted to get back to studying the word with you guys and doing the, um, the fellowshipping with you ladies. Because I really, really miss it, especially on YouTube as well. I've been slacking on that. But, you know, pray for me. Um, I do have study notes available. I made oh gosh that's really like close but i made some study notes um it's five pages verse by verse you guys know how i do cross references questions in depth um definitions and things like that i still wanted to if i can show you guys definitions but i definitely i wasn't gonna do study notes at first but god was telling me to do it because that's how i normally do my studies and i know you guys enjoy it so it is available just for two dollars um, i'm not you guys know i don't how i feel about charging and things like that but it is a lot of work um, I literally did this maybe in like two, three hours. <laughs> so yeah. Um, oh my gosh, I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm not talking about you guys. Sorry. <laughs> okay, hold on. Okay, there we go. There we go. Let me <laughs> see. I didn't know that um, my bishop was gonna go live today for a Good Friday virtual service. So because I handle the church social media, I'm trying to like multitask okay just posted a status but yeah so um this bible was a gift from one of you ladies alicia i have a i got a lot of videos i need to go up on youtube i have a haul with this unboxing and everything but let me zoom out real quick so you ladies can see um, this is the same Bible that I've been using. It is the NKJV Journal of the Word Bible. You ladies know I love this Bible. I have this one, which is the teal floral. Um, my baby, we know. I have, however, already studied Psalms in here originally. Yeah, I've went through the Psalms in this one already. So, because I have a new one and because I am, per I prefer the New King James translation, I'm going to 
use this originally i was going to just have a printout but i'm using this bible because i prefer this bible and i love it um this is however the updated one this is the comfort print version if you guys are interested um i swear by this bible this is probably like my favorite go-to journaling bible out there because it's enough space the lines are there but they're also faint and i like how dark the text is in this comfort print so that is the bible that i'm using but if you have the older version it's the same bible um that's that so as far as tools and utensils so let's talk pens real quick you guys know i enjoy the micron pen um this is the black one this is the zero one point what point is this uh the point 25 millimeter i have my two from zebra that i enjoy the f301 and the g301 they're both 0.7 millimeter pens basically one is a ballpoint ball point and one is a gel that's it <laughs> so i prefer the ballpoint but the gel is also nice in the bible and of course my go-to highlighters we know what they are right i'm gonna try to um bring them out okay so to the ladies who are watching and who have cashed at me i'm going to try to email you like immediately but if i can't i will email you directly after this just because the, my cash app is not attached to my doi um, email so i apologize if you really wanted them while we're studying but i'm gonna send those to you immediately after but um so my favorite highlighters are the zebra mouth liner true ladies no i love these these are amazing um i've seen a few people complain about the bleed through the darker colors will bleed through of course because they're darker but i don't personally have any problems with them um, and they're just a dual ended highlighter. So one side it looks like this, just a fine point, And then the other side is a chisel. They do have updated ones or new ones rather, which are the brush pens, which literally is just a brush tip and a finer, like an ultra fine point. Love these to death. However, these do dry out more quickly, which I don't like. So kind of sucks, but I swear by these. I have the entire 25 count. I love them so much. Um, and then of course, Crayola Super Tips. If you're looking for something super quick and easy and affordable to highlight in your Bible, these super tips are amazing. You get a variety of colors. I normally just buy the 50 pack um, and that lasts me a long time. Um, post-it notes, of course, I have a variety. I will be sharing with you ladies all of my post-it notes eventually because I have like a huge stash. But the ones I'm using right now are these. I know that you really can't find these anywhere anymore, unfortunately. Um, the owl ones from Walmart. These I picked up from Etsy a while ago, um, and then these are also just regular post-its, so these are just the three I'm going to be using today. Um, is that it? I know I'm like, I feel like I'm stalling. I'm not stalling, guys. I'm just, I'm trying to multitask at the same time. <laughs> um, right. I don't know. Perfectly things go smooth. I haven't gotten any more texts uh okay okay and people are trying to get into the group so i want to approve them before i even fully dive in okay if you ladies have i don't know who has like the ability to approve people but if you can just approve people as they join um the group just please do that but yes i'm gonna stop rambling we're gonna dive in okay so let me zoom back in again i know that it's blurry that's not me that is literally facebook facebook is retarded and they need to figure out their live situation but hopefully it's close enough for you ladies to see again we are going to be diving into psalms 1 verses 1 through 6 all of the psalms 1 um i'm personally reading out of the new king james i prefer that translation i'm gonna make a whole video on youtube of why i prefer the new king james even though i will study from the csb the niv the nlt this um the esv and all that i do use other bibles but this is my preferred go-to because it's closest to the king james but um i think that's it all i wanted to talk about before we dive in yes i prayed in so what i'd say if i forget anything i will try to mention it at the end i don't want this to go past an hour it is 8 25 i'm gonna try to keep this for an hour it shouldn't be that long but you guys know i like to talk so we're gonna dive right in <laughs> to this study um i'm going to be directly reading off of the notes so again if you are purchasing the notes i will send them directly after this so please bear with me um okay so the title of this is The Way of the Righteous and the End of the Ungodly. So some basic information real quick about um, Psalms 1 is that this psalm is basically contrasting between the righteous person who gives their life to Christ and the sinner or the ungodly person who submits to the enemy. So it's basically 
one who gives their life to Christ versus one who submits to the enemy. This is also a promise to those who read and meditate on the word of God and obey the word of God. And if you ladies have any questions, feel free to post them up. I'll see them. I'm on my phone. I'm on the computer at the same time looking. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything, just post them up. Um, if you are new to the DOI Thought Up Increase group, I just want to say thank you for joining us. We are a family. You know, a few of us have been MIA for a minute, especially me. But I'm back full force, ready. And this is literally just a safe place where you can study the word of God, talk about the word of God, um, and just lay your cares down and commune with other women. So that's pretty much what this group is about. But real quick before I dive in, if you're new, the way that I study the word is that I will read it paragraph by paragraph or section by section. Because this is literally only six verses, I'm going to read it in its entirety. So what I do is I first read through it. I don't make any markings. I just read through it for a basic understanding. Then I will go and follow up by going through it again and circling words. Okay, hold on guys. I'm sorry. My bishop just went live, so I have to make sure that I am on the live. <laughs> um, okay, I should be good. Shouldn't have no interruptions after this. What is going on? I don't know what happened, but okay. But yeah, so the first step is to read through no markings. The second step is to read through it again. And as you're read throughing it, um, then circle words that you want to define. And when I say circle words you want to define, it doesn't matter if you know the word or if you don't know the word, especially if you know a word, um, still circle it because you want to define it not in the English dictionary, but you want to define it in the Hebrew or the Greek because we're in the Old Testament it is going to be the Hebrew so anything that I circle anything that I want to define I am going to define it in its Hebrew context according to the scripture and to do that you can use biblehub.com they have an online um, concordance you can also just use a Strong's concordance which has a bunch of uh, the definitions and things like that but um, you can do that so after you circle you will then read it through again and underline parts of the verses that stand out anything that you think is important and then break those down and as you're breaking it down you would write your notes and then box your notes because it helps your notes to stand out and what I mean by that let me quickly show you um, quickly quickly so right now I'll just show you what John is looking like if you see my my um oh faith is falling out but this is what I mean so you would underline like I did here can I okay you would underline it you would make your note box your note and then draw a line and then you would color code so that you know which line goes with which just so it makes everything easier to follow when you're looking back at it and because color is fun so Pretty much that's it. I do have a free download if you want more information on the step-by-step -step process that I do. But we're going to dive into this because like I said, I don't want to be too long. I am just going to use my ballpoint pen. So I'm taking the Zebra F301 ballpoint pen. It's a 0.7 millimeter. Okay, so quickly reading through. In verse 1, it says, Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. And, God, and ungodly are not so. Excuse me, verse 4, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So we read it through. Now I'm going to circle words that I want to define. And let me pull that paper up so that I have it out. So I have quite a few words that I personally circled because I felt like they were words that I wanted to understand. This part of you doing your Bible study is definitely personal. So you don't have to circle words that I'm circling. This is definitely what you want to understand and what you want to learn for a better understanding. So for verse one, the word that I circled was blessed. Sorry that my hand is in the way. We're going to have to make this work. I'm going to set it up next time better. But the first word I circled was blessed. I really wanted to understand what that was. And blessed in Hebrew is called Eshar, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but it's E S 
h-e-r let me put this on the camera can you guys see this hopefully you can see it but um blessed in hebrew is right here and basically what it means is happiness and contentment so that's basically all that i'm gonna write is happiness and contentment um because this is a new bible i'm a little iffy in writing in it so <laughs> it's gonna take me a minute but okay i'm gonna just put it here happiness and contentment that is the definition that i'm putting i'm going to box it and then draw an arrow boom there we go um the next word that i have circled was walks And that in Hebrew is halak. I'm probably saying it wrong again. So I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce the name. You guys can see the name here. But basically it is moral and religious way of conducting your life or your integrity. So I'm going to write moral slash religious way of conducting life and integrity and what happens is when you break down the words and what their original language is it makes the verses um more understandable i'm sorry guys i'm just trying to figure out what is going on, on my computer okay so it makes the words a lot more understandable in the, the scriptures next word i circled was counsel and for that, it's basically one who is, one who gives advice or to give advice. So I'm going to put to advise for counsel. Next word I circled was ungodly. And it's, it, it looks like I'm circling a lot, but you're going to understand exactly why I'm circling each of these words and defining them when we actually go to break down the scriptures. So ungodly. And for that, it's basically one who is guilty of sin against God or man. So one who is guilty My bishop is singing. Sorry, guys. I can't hear him, but I got the video pulled up. <laughs> I love my bishop. <laughs> that was so weird. I'm sorry. So one who is guilty. See, I done messed up. Look at that. See, this is what happens when I don't pay attention. So of sin against God or man. If you ladies hear that beeping in the background and you watch my YouTube channel, you guys know what that is. <laughs> So, yes. And your handwriting in your Bible does not have to be perfect. I know when I first started, I wanted it to be really neat and perfect. But it's your Bible. Um, and it's just, it, it shows your dedication to studying the word. Um, next word I did was stands. So, I'm going to just circle all the words. Stands. Path. Sits. And seat. So stands is basically, um, in Hebrew, it is to abide with, attend to, present oneself before, to persist, or to dwell. And that is a lot, um, but it kind of makes sense when you, again, break down the word. So I am actually going to take a sticky note and write the rest of these because I don't want to take up too much space. So when I use a sticky note... <laughs> yeah a messy bible literally it looks messy but it just feels so amazing when you go back to look at it and you see the dedication and the time that you spent with god especially when you reread your notes like when i go back to reread some of my notes in my bible i'm just like oh my god this is amazing but um okay so when i use a sticky note and i am doing a study like this what i do is i write the word or the verse so if it's like a verse that i'm writing i'll put v1 v2 or whatever box it and then I will highlight it again in the color that I'm using that corresponds to the color that I used. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll show you guys in a second. But um stands is this in frame? There we go. 
So stands, I'm going to box that and it's basically to abide with, present oneself to, sorry, before, present one's self before and attend to. The next word, as I said, was path. So for path, what I got was that it is a way, a road, a distance, journey, a manner, direction, or a course of life. So the words that stand out for me in those definitions um, is way, manner, course of life. Following that, I had sit, so sit is um, to remain, to dwell, or to establish, so to remain, dwell, or establish, seat, and I know these sound like words that we already know, <laughs> but again, I looked it up in the Hebrew. So for seat, um, that word basically meant dwelling place, assembly, or habitation. So I'm going to put all three of those words. Dwelling place, assembly. If you guys need me to slow down, let me know. I know I speak fast. I'm still working on slowing down. So if you need me to slow down or repeat anything, just let me know. Okay, so then I also did scornful. Usually, also what I do is when it comes to these definitions, I already have them written down. So when we come back tomorrow in the morning um, for the next study, I'm already going to have the definitions written out because this part is very long and tedious. So yes, um, <laughs> scornful. Do you guys want me to walk you through this part or do you want me to just skip ahead to the verse breakdown? Because I can always just come back to this part later on. But um, let me know if you guys want me to actually write out the words or just show you the paper with the definitions. So scornful is basically a mocker. It is one who has an open dislike or shows disrespect. So a mocker. open dislike or disrespect then the next word is going to be delight then I circled meditate I circled planted I circled fruit, I circled wither in verse 3, prosper in verse 3, and then the last two words I did were chaff in verse 4, and then in verse 6 I circled perish. Hi Kelly! Okay, so again, lots of words that I circled, I know, but it will make sense as we continue studying. Um, I am definitely one of those people that really likes to break down any word possible to get a better, fuller understanding of the scripture. Because what happens a lot is people take scripture and tend to, um, what is what is the proper word to say? They, they sort of alter the meaning of scripture when they don't really understand what each word means so i'm very meticulous is that the right word meticulous um i'm very particular about the words that i want to define and fully understand in the hebrew context so that's why i circled a lot of words <laughs> but um, i'm just going to write so delight in hebrew is pleasure or desire
meditates. So in Hebrew, um, that is definitely a word that I know. <laughs> it's basically to moan, to utter, to speak, to ponder on, to declare, to study, to talk, to imagine. So you, again, you don't have to write all those words. That's a lot of words. <laughs> but um, I'm going to put to ponder, declare, study, and utter. The next word I had circled was planted in verse 3. So, again, if you're just watching, um, if you sent me payment through Cash App, I will have to send the email directly after this live just because my Cash App is not connected to my DOI email address. It's connected to my personal email and I can't get to it because I'm on my phone. <laughs> so, um if you send me payment through Cash App directly after this live, I will immediately send you all of the um, the files that you need to download. If you pay through PayPal, let me know if you were able to go directly to the Dropbox links because I should have it connected, but I'm also emailing it just in case. So if you did purchase the um, note, let me know if it sent you directly to the actual PDF on Dropbox because that's how I have it set up. Um, so plant it. So for this one, I'm going to show you guys. So Plant it right here. This is what it is in Hebrew, but it means to transplant um, or to be established. It's to place or fix in a specified position to plant in the ground for growth. And I thought that was important to really know. Um, so I'm going to put to establish. To plant for growth. um place or fix in a specified position my bishop is going i'm sorry guys i'm gonna keep saying my bishop is going i'm I, i'm listening to my mother listen to the live and i have the live on my computer <laughs> Next time I have to make sure I'm not doing this the same time my bishop is going live. But um, the next word I had was fruits, or fruit rather. For that, it's basically reward or result. So reward, results, that heat got me hot right now. Wither, that is basically disgrace, dishonor, come to nothing, to fall away, to fail or to faint so the three that i'm going to put are basically come to nothing to fall away and to fail following that we have prosper And for that, it's basically to be profitable, um, to be good, or to have success. So, have success. And just a tip, when you are doing your word, like when you're doing the definitions, um, especially if you're using a concordance, there are a ton of definitions for one word. But what I find when I use Bible Hub, and I still have to do a video all about Bible Hub, but when I use their text analysis, I love that they allow me to get the definition for the specific verse that I'm in. So um, that's why I prefer Bible Hub over any of the other resources out there, which I'll have a, a video on that because I think I talked about it before, but it wasn't like a full in-depth video. So I need to do that. So be profitable. My handwriting is starting to get sloppy, but that's okay. Um, chafe. So, I don't know if it's chafe or chaff, don't really know, but it's basically husk of corn or other seeds separated by winnowing or threshing, and it's also basically something worthless. So, I'm going to put literally something worthless. <laughs> and then the last word was perish, which is to annihilate, to destroy, to give up, to be void of. To have no way to flee. So I'm going to put to annihilate, destroy, 
to give up. So I have my words. Hey, Tasha. Have my words all defined. Again, the definitions are on the paper on page four if you have if you do purchase. But there we go. So now we're gonna go in with color before I go any further because my eyesight will get crazy. I am just pulling out my zebras. We love these babies, of course. And we're just gonna randomly use color. I always use the um this side, the fine tip side. So we're just gonna start by circling. And at the end of the study, I'm going to show you guys a bleed through. So you can see for yourself. Oopsie, I just made a really bad error. <laughs> Let me move my cup out of the way. Okay. There we go. I'm going to take this blue for walks. And I'm just connecting it with different colors so that my eyes can follow everything. random colors so this is one i'm going to show you guys so i circled meditates in pink so what i will go here to do on the sticky note is right where it says meditate i would literally just box it in the same color or fill it in however you see fit that you want to do it um but that's how i do it i'm going to take this green for ungodly and i don't color code when i do this um like no specific color means anything when I'm in my journaling Bible just because I don't want to have a lot of the same color personally. That's just me. Stands. We're going to do that. Scoring form. I'm just going to make red just because I feel like making it red. Don't know why. There is no rhyme or reason to my coloring either. We just go with colors and I try to keep the colors. Um, I try not to pile colors that are identical next to each other so like if i use a dark purple and a light purple i don't want them together just because it'll mess up my eyesight and i don't think it looks pretty that's just personal preference um yeah <laughs> i probably should not have used that but whatever that's a dark dark gray the lights lancid Parish down here. Chafe, chaff, chafe. I don't even know what the word is, but yep, that word. <laughs> Let's use seats for that. Um pink for sits this pinky coral i'll use for fruit i love these highlighters so much and we need two more so let's go prosper with this pink and lastly let's use this orange i guess for wither okay so you guys can see the color going and it matches the same colors on here so that's why i never get confused i will be redoing this this looks a little hot messish but it's okay we're gonna keep going <laughs> so i'm going to put the colors i didn't use in here okay all the definitions are done so now it'll make understanding the text a lot better. So moving on, we have blessed is the man. I'm going to underline that entire verse. Um, so blessed is the man. We are going to use, I guess, um, what color do I want to use? Don't want to use blue. I'll take this gray, I guess, right here. And underline blessed is a man basically um in hebrew the word for blessed is asher we understand that its meaning is happiness or contentment um but what is interesting is that the root word for asher is ashar which means to go straight so basically those who are straight with god those who are right with god 
will remain happy and content. So that's what I am going to put. Um, I guess I can write my note up here. So those who are straight with God will remain happy and content. And at first glance, it might seem like, what is that? What, what does that really mean? Just because all you see is blessed is a man. But I basically understood what this verse meant after I totally studied the entire text. So that's why I have it there. Um, but you'll understand what that means further as we keep going. So blessed is the man and whoop, there we go. So that's going to be gray. So then moving on, it says, who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. So walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. I'm underlining that whole thing. And basically what that is telling me is do not take the advice of the ungodly, but seek only wise counsel from God and those in the faith. Discern between godly and ungodly counsel, which then also brings forth the question of who do you let counsel you? Who is giving you advice? Is it your friends? Are you going to God in prayer for advice? Are you seeking out um, understanding from the Holy Spirit? Are you allowing Jesus to counsel you? Or are you allowing your best friend who seems to always be negative? Or your ex-best friend, your ex-boyfriend, your, your rude mother or whatever. You know, people have different types of relationships with people. But hopefully you guys get what I'm saying. Um, who are you really letting counsel you? I know for me there are some times when I won't seek after the counsel of God. And when I don't seek after the counsel of God, I tend to go astray. Um, but when I do seek his counsel, which is the best type of counsel, or when I seek any godly counsel um, from anyone in the faith, especially my leaders, I can go to my leaders because I know that they'll definitely direct me in the right path. Um, so it just really makes you wonder, like, who are you letting counsel you? Who are you letting give you advice? Um, is it someone godly? Is it God himself? Is it Jesus? Is it the Holy Spirit? Or is it someone um, ungodly, someone with a lot of negativity that they like to spew out of their mouths? Um, for that, there are a few cross-references. I wanted to read the cross-references. Where's my Bible? <laughs> so let me grab my other Bible real quick. I have Bibles everywhere. All right, so I'm reading from the New King James in my um, other Bible, which is the Spirit Filled Life Bible. You guys know I love this Bible. Um, so like I said, it's going to be Psalm 119, which is the cross reference. And it's going to be verses 24 and 25. No, excuse me, 24 and 35. So um, in 24, it says, your testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. So the testimonies of God should be your counselor. And then in verse 35 of the same Psalms 119, it says, make me walk in the path of your commandments for I delight in it. So, are you walking in the path of God's commandments? Are you getting the counsel from him alone? So what I'm going to put is discern. Can you guys see? Sorry. Let me just move myself up a bit. Let me get better setup going. Let me let me get a better setup going. And put my Bible here. All right, there we go. So what I'm going to put is discern between godly and ungodly counsel. Seek God or those in the faith for wise counsel. And then over on this side, I'm going to put the question, who do you let
counsel you. So I'm just gonna box that. Uh oh, didn't mean to do that. For this, I'm going to take this vermilion type of color. It is going to look messy because <laughs> I have a lot of color going on and a lot of notes, but that's okay. It just means I'm really learning from the word of God. Oh, cross references. I forgot to put that. <laughs> I am just going to pop that here. Psalm 119, 24, and 35. Hope this is the right color. Yes, this is the right color. What time is it? Oh, it's 8.57. Lord, help me. Talk too much. <laughs> okay, so then it says, nor stand in the paths of sinners. So I'm going to underline that. And let me just flip ahead to my cross-reference for that as well. But, um, so nor stand in the path of sinners basically you're to stay away from activities that will lead you to sin the path is basically the way of life the direction that you choose to go and again when we went to define path path definition was a manner or course of life so basically to stand in the path of sinners is basically to walk in that direction or to go in that that sort of core. how can i say this it makes sense in my head but trying to say it out loud it just sounds weird um <laughs> don't basically stand or don't do things that will basically bring you from the way that god has you going the direct path that he has you going that's the simplest way that i can like say it out loud but what I also put in my notes was that the path the godly must take is the one that most abandon and choose not to take. God's path is always the right path. So when we are in this walk, it is not easy. It is it is hard. Um, it is hard. The scripture in Matthew 7, 13, that is a cross reference. Um, it says, enter by the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction and there are many who go in by it because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life and there are few who find it so the path of sinners is one that many choose to take they choose to live by their own rules they choose to do what pleases their flesh they choose to just have fun and disregard the word of god but when you know the word of god you're going to have to walk a more narrow path you're going to have to live by a certain standard certain morals certain understandings um and it is tough <laughs> i know for me when i was in high school and college I, I just it was hard especially when you had friends that really didn't know god or you had friends that did know god but they chose to disregard the word of God. It was very, very hard. I found myself, um, because I was seeking counsel from these ungodly people, I found that I was then partaking in activities that were ungodly, things that God basically prohibited. So then the question that follows is, what activities are you partaking in? What are the things that the people that you seek counsel from doing? And um, if the things that they're doing is not edifying to your to your growth, to your spirit, then should you even be partaking in it? So, I know I said a lot. Yeah, I know I talk a lot. That's why we got the note. <laughs> but um, there are other cross references. I'm not going to read those, but the other three cross references are Psalm 1611, Proverbs 1 and 15. Actually, I am going to read it because why not? <laughs> so, the first one is Psalm 16 and 11. I'm going to quickly read that. I'm going to miss out on my bishop. Lord, help me. <laughs> I'll watch the replay. But 16 and 11, it says, You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So the path of life is that which you follow, that God gives you. 
the path of sinners is not of life it's more so of death so that's the first one the second cross reference is going to be proverbs 1 and 15 and if i can get to it that says my son do not walk in the way with them keep your foot from their path and what it means by them is basically them being sinners um and then we have proverbs 4 14 which reads do not enter the path of the wicked and do not walk in the way of evil so we have that so what i'm going to write now and what i'm doing is i'm giving you guys the notes and then i'm actually going to write because a lot of the times i don't always take all the notes that i type up and put it in my journaling bible i just put the most important things that will help me to remember everything um so let's let's get a color first let's do that um let's go i guess with this yellow since i don't really have a choice <laughs> no i don't want that yellow it's gonna be too close let's go with purple so that lavender color and what i'm going to put is the cross references first so i have matthew 7 hey dominique is bishop preaching sis <laughs> i can't see it <laughs> Psalm 16, 11, Proverbs 1, 15, and then 4, 14. So that's the first part. And then what I'm going to put is um, stay away. from activities that will lead. you to send if the camera is shaking i apologize um and god's path is always the right path Okay. Then it follows that by saying, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Again, I did underline that entire verse. <laughs> so basically what it means is do not dwell with those who openly have a dislike of God or those who knowingly disregard his word. For me, that was kind of like a slap in the face because I used to hang out with people that I knew that they knew who God was, but they chose not to to follow his rules, follow his regulations, follow his commandments. And because I chose to then dwell among them, I then started to change the course and direction of my life from God, from what God wanted me to do, which then that resulted from me then getting the counsel from them. So if you guys notice, all three of these verses are linked and it's it shows a progression, which I'll get to in a second um, because this definitely is sort of a progressive type of thing. But um. When it says, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, it then brings the question, who is in your circle? Who do you associate with? Are you truly proud of the God that you serve? Are you proud of being a follower of Christ? Because if you're proud of those things and you associate with the right people, then the people that you're associated with would not have an open dislike of God or they would live by the word of God. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that they're, you know, don't hang out with whoever you're hanging out with. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is there's a difference between having friends or having associates and people that you know who know the word of God and unknowingly, there's a difference between unknowingly disregarding the word of God and knowingly disregarding the word of God. I did things unknowingly previously in my past, but now that I know that certain things are not right, I make it a, I make it a habit to try and stick to not doing these things because I know that they are wrong. You know, it's kind of like when you're talking with kids about um, not having sex before marriage. We were all taught as children, don't have sex before marriage. It's in the word of God. Okay, we get it. But do you really fully understand it? Do you really understand why? And it wasn't until after I had my son that I understood why you don't have sex before marriage <laughs> because there's a lot of things that go into it. Um, but pretty much that's what i put and so what i'm going to put 
are those questions. Who is in your circle? Who do you associate with? Are you proud of being a follower of Christ? Of being a follower of Christ? Proud of the God you serve? I do have two cross references. So the first one for that is going to be um, Psalms 26 verses 4 through 5. Let me flip to that real quick. 26, 4 through 5 reads, I have not sat with idolatrous mortals, nor will I go in with hypocrites. I have hated the assembly of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. And then we have Jeremiah 25, 17. Sorry, not 25. It is Jeremiah 15, 17. Jeremiah 15, 17. That reads, I did not sit in the assembly of the mockers, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone because of your hand, for you have filled me with indignation. Um, so will you sit with the scornful people? Will you sit with those people who have an open dislike for God, for those people who knowingly disregard the word of God? Or will you choose to sit by yourself and live according to the word of God? That's a good one. Um, so for that, I'm going to put again Psalm 1611 and then Jeremiah 15, 17. For that, we're going to go... with this blue color so again it, it brings to mind who's influencing your life with just those three portions about walk not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stand in the paths of the sinners nor sit in the seat of the scornful who is influencing your life? This basically shows a progression of the influence that the ungodly person can have on a righteous person when you choose to entertain them. By first, you basically the first thing that you do is you walk away um, by turning away from God and acting contrary to his word. Then the next thing you do by standing is you abide with those ungodly people and change your way of life to suit them. And then the third thing that you do is you sit and by doing that, you're basically dwelling in the company that is not beneficial to your spirit or to a life of God. We're basically being told in verse one alone to avoid relationships that will destroy our personal relationship with God and that the righteous are called to be separate from the world. So that is all in just verse one. And again, that is why I broke down each word specifically, because if I didn't break these words down, it, it wouldn't mean much to me. When I first read this, you know, chapter one of Psalms, I didn't really get much out of it. But it wasn't until I went in and I broke down each word that I fully got a better understanding of what it meant. So now we're going to move on to verse two. And I apologize if this does go over an hour. That is my fault. Yeah. But <laughs> um, oops. See, this is what happens when we start moving things. Should I? Okay. So verse two, it says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law, he meditates day and night. So his delight is in the law of the Lord. I'm going to underline. Then I'm going to put a box around in his law. Actually, nope, not going to do it. I'm going to underline in his law separately and then underline he meditates day and night. So that's three different underlines. The first one is his delight in the law of the Lord. The second underline is in his law. And then the third underline is he meditates day and night. So let me box, I mean, underline these now a color so that I have that already done. Okay. So 
the first portion which says his delight is in the law of the lord basically is saying to set your heart on god and his word enjoy his ways as they are the best for us to take pleasure in what the lord excuse me to take pleasure in what the word of god says and how the spirit reveals it to you so then it brings again the questions of does the word of god make you happy does it excite you does god have to beg you to read your word does the holy spirit have to nudge you to read your word do you have a hunger for his word? Now, I know for me personally, I love the word of God. It, it it does something to me every time I actually take the time to sit down and study. And you guys have actually seen the effect it has on me when I don't study the word. Me being absent in the group, me not really making videos the way I wanted to make videos. It was all because I really wasn't studying the way I personally used to because I was so um, not obsessed. That's not the right word. What is the word I'm looking for? Oh, my gosh. I was so bogged down by doing everything for DOI that I neglected my personal time with God and being in the word of God that because of that, I didn't find enjoyment in the word anymore because I felt like, okay, I had to do this for DOI instead of my personal time. So um, does the word of God make you happy? Does it excite you? If it doesn't, then you really need to figure out why it's not because the word should always excite you. Even those dreary, dark parts of the Bible should excite you in some way. Um, then does God have to beg you to read your word? For me, sometimes we do. I mean, not gonna lie, sometimes I'm just like, I don't want to read the word today. I don't want to do that. I want to go read something else. I want to go watch something. Um, I'm being honest. You guys know I love studying the word of God, but there are times where I'm just like, I don't want to do it. I don't. Um, and I feel like God has to like really pull on my heart or beg me to do so. Sorry guys, I just got a message. Um, I will check that after. <laughs> but, um, you know, so it, it never should be like that. I should have pleasure in his word. And again, delight, where is that word at? Uh, delight is basically pleasure and desire. So I should have a desire um, to want to read his word, okay? Sorry, I'm looking at these messages from my sisters from church. <laughs> okay. Um, then... Do you have a hunger for his word? I definitely could tell that I had lost my hunger for the word of God um, for a few weeks. You guys know the whole story with that. I told you guys on YouTube. Uh, but I definitely did lose my hunger for it. But now I got my hunger back and it is so amazing. Like when you take pleasure in his word and meditating on it and studying it, there is such a hunger in you that you feel like you want to spend hours and hours and hours and days in the word. I mean, there are some times where I'm studying for 15 minutes and there's sometimes that 15 minutes literally will turn into five hours. And I'm looking up like, oh my God, a whole day went by because like I'm studying. Oh, yay. Okay. Let me not, let me comment back later. Okay. I'm done. <laughs> Let's focus. Um, and my bishop just went off. Great. <laughs> But um, yeah, so for that, um, Psalms 119.16 is the cross-reference for that. So let me just turn to it. So it says, I will delight myself in your statues. I will not forget your word. Um, so I'm going to write over here. Um, do... You have a hunger for his word. And again, there's definitely a lot more that I can write. But for me personally, it's like, do I have a hunger for it? That's something that sticks out to me. But again, does the word make you happy? Does God have to really beg you? Or does the Holy Spirit have to nudge you? We really should, you know, set our hearts on him and his word alone. So, there we go. Moving on, um, in his law, I did that in green. Basically, the law should be in your hearts. Um, it says so in Psalms 37, 31. I'm going to flip to that quickly. Psalms 37, 31, and it reads, The law of his God is in his heart and none of his steps shall slide. So when you have the law, which is the word of God in your heart, it should prevent you from backsliding. It should prevent you from making mistakes. Now, I'm not going to say we're not going to make mistakes because I know I make mistakes all the time. It is what it is. But um, the word of God should protect you at all times and it should be in your heart. You should be able to 
quote a scripture and it doesn't have to be like a long massive scripture no even if it's just a simple line of a scripture you should be able to you know say that out loud so i'm gonna put psalm 37 31 is the word in my heart i put mine but i meant to put your heart but you guys get it right <laughs> then it says he meditates day and night so basically there should be a constant state of communion and fellowship with god through bible study through Bible reading and there is a difference between Bible study and Bible reading. I talked about this before but reading the word versus studying the word are two different things. They're both great. I personally would would definitely encourage people to study the word of God because you get a better understanding rather than just reading it but um, you should be in a constant state of communion and fellowship like I said through Bible study, through Bible reading, through pay, prayer and things that edify you. Um, take in the word of God daily and do it more than once a day. Um, and it doesn't have to be like a long-winded type of thing. We all have the Bible app. At least I would believe we all have the Bible app on our phones. And they have those scripture of the days and things like that. They have Bible plans that you can read through. Um, but I personally feel like the morning times should be sort of a devotional time or Bible reading. And then you should also have another time in the evening when you're doing Bible study. Now you can flip those around. You can do Bible study in the morning when you wake up because some people prefer to do it that way and then do your Bible reading or devotional at night. But personally, I feel like you should be doing a Bible study and a Bible reading or devotional every day. That's two times that you're in the Bible. Um, personally, you're supposed to be spending two hours and 40 minutes with God a day because that is 10% of a day, 24 hours. Um, I'm not that great at spending the full two hours and 40 minutes, but I do try to at least spend two hours with God every day, be it through worshiping with music, studying his word, praying, whatever the case may be. Um, you can also, um, journal about the scriptures that you write, do scripture writing. You can pray scriptures just to stay in constant communion with God. Um, so there are two quotes from Charles Spurgeon that I found. The first one is, says that meditation chews the cut and gets the sweetness and nutritive virtue of the word into the heart and life. This is the way of the godly and how it brings forth much fruit. Then he also said, it is not only reading that does us good, but the soul inwardly feeding and digesting it, it being the word of God. So how do you feed and digest on the word of God? You study it. You spend time in the word and that's something that's crucial. So then it also, again, brings the question, what books are you reading? What music are you listening to? What shows or movies are you watching? Then it also makes you wonder, okay, how often do I read my Bible? How often do I study the word of God? Now, for me, you guys know my story with books, okay? For those who don't know my story with books, I love books. I'm a book nerd. I'm a bookworm. If you follow my book channel, you know what I'm talking about. If you follow the DOI YouTube channel, you know books are my life but before I got into biblical fiction and Christian fiction books I was reading a lot more erotic novels and if you guys don't know what erotic novels are they're basically novels that just talk about sex pretty much that's what interests me a lot um they were interesting I was reading BDSM novels I was reading hardcore like novels that had like vulgar sex scenes I don't read them like that at all hardly ever really and if I do it's probably like once in a blue moon um I have definitely changed up my taste and you guys can see that on YouTube. I've switched up my, my, my taste ever since I was introduced to biblical fiction and Christian fiction. Um, so I'm definitely mindful about the books that I'm reading, even when it comes to my fantasy novels, because I still love my fantasy, my paranormal. That's just me. God will have to work on it because I love my paranormals. <laughs> but um, it definitely, when it comes to me reading specific type of books, I have to be mindful of whether it's edifying my spirit or if it's just pleasing my flesh. Music, I'm very particular about music now. I find that I listen to a lot more gospel music and slightly some R&B. I mentioned before how I can only listen to hip-hop and R&B for a certain amount of time before my ears start to tingle. And that's literally the Holy Spirit telling me that is enough. The shows and movies that I watch, honestly, I don't watch TV as often anymore. <laughs> I literally do nothing but watch um, YouTube videos now all about books and about um, like Christian YouTubers. And I also watch a lot of anime now with that i'm very mindful i mentioned before how i <laughs> used to watch the show lucifer and um lucifer to me was a, i thought it was a great show the actors were great the plot line was great 
but after season one i found that i was getting really interested in lucifer as a character like i was enjoying lucifer as a character and it wasn't until the holy spirit had to tell me to stop watching it that i realized like wait a minute now um lucifer i know who lucifer is my bible tells me he who he is he's saying he's the enemy he's not good um but the way they had lucifer in the show if you guys have seen lucifer then you know what i'm talking about the, he played the character really well um the show was really good but i found myself enjoying it way too much that if i continued to watch it if i had continued to watch it it would have probably swayed me in certain areas so um when it comes to shows and movies i have to be mindful about what it is that i'm watching certain things i just will not watch like mm -mm, not at all like they got the new sabrina show the sabrina chilling adventures chilling stories i don't know what it's called but i will i seen one episode and i didn't even watch the whole episode i think i probably watched like 20 minutes and i got fed up it scared the mess out of me and um i refuse to watch it because it's very dark and um there's nothing wrong with horror movies let me just say that because i don't want anyone to take what i'm saying and like you know try to twist it i'm not saying stop listening to music i'm not saying stop reading the books that you read because for me it took me a while with the books that i used to read i used to read books like um what is that book 50 shades of gray i used to love books like that all the time that's just what i read um but now i'm very mindful about the romances that i pick i'm mindful about the shows that i watch i watch like i said a lot of anime anime <laughs> anime is one of those things that i'm still working on i'm asking god to work on me with that because what i find with anime is anime is really fun to watch but um they make everything cute so even when i'm watching like the fantasy animes and they have like demon characters they're cute and adorable to me but i know my bible tells me that that is not the case so certain shows when i'm watching animes i literally have to stop watching them so you really have to be mindful about what you're um intaking in order to consistently be in tune with god and to meditate and basically all this goes back to meditating because meditating is basically pondering declaring stuttering stuttering uttering and studying um even if you're not reading the word of god the books that you're reading should edify you some way when i read biblical fiction now I'm, I'm gaining so much knowledge and understanding of the word of god when i'm reading christian fiction i'm learning so much about my faith um when i'm watching specific shows i'm learning i'm taking something out of it that i can apply to my walk with god um with music i li literally listen to nothing but gospel music now and the the gospel artists that i'm finding blow my mind like blow my mind so that was a whole tangent i know i'm gonna give you some scriptures real quick <laughs> so the first scripture is going to be joshua 1 and 8 if i can connect to that where is it tomorrow morning hopefully i'll be a little bit more organized with my scriptures and stuff but um joshua 1 and 8 basically says this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it and i'm sorry for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success so um scripture tells you multiple times meditate day and night so that's twice a day not once a day the bible is very specific when it says meditate day and night it's not saying you gotta meditate at this time and then this time but it's saying day and night morning and night evening and night i mean eve afternoon and evening things like that so um i know i just said a lot i'm not even going to read the rest of the cross references but the other ones i had were psalms 119 verse 15 and then first thessalonians 2 13 and then first thessalonians 5 17 um so I just said a whole lot. I don't even know what I want to write. <laughs> um, I'm just going to put constant state of communion. Oops, sorry, you guys cannot see that. <laughs> I'm going to get this camera set up going for tomorrow correctly because I don't know what's going on with Facebook. It's annoying. So constant state of communion and fellowship with God. Simply put, that's what it's saying. Where is that highlighter? There we go. This is going to be a hassle to edit the post on YouTube. Because we're already almost over the one hour mark. Oops. <laughs> Alright, verse 3. We're almost there. Three more verses to go. So, um, it says... He shall be like a tree planted. So I'm going to underline, shall be like a tree planted. And then I'm also going to underline by the rivers of water. So that's two separate things that I'm underlining. 
So, shall be like a tree planted is one. You guys see this? Okay, yeah. And then the second portion is going to be by the rivers of the water. So, the most important part of a tree is the hidden root system that draws up water and nourishment. So, therefore, the most important part of a believer's life is the spiritual root system that draws on the resources, which are basically God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Trees are deeply rooted, which means that we need to be deeply rooted in God. And for that, we just need, you just need to basically abide in him. Trees are stable because of their roots. Trees are strong because of their roots. So then the question that forms is, where does your stability and your strength come from? Are you rooted in God or are you rooted in something else? And that's literally all I'm going to say. That's just a question you guys can think about and ponder on your own. Because I feel like just that... That line alone really makes me think about where I'm drawing my strength from and um, my stability. You guys know the story again on YouTube. I talked about how I just wasn't able to find a balance with everything because I found my stability in Daughter of Increase. But I had to remember that God gave me this ministry. This was not something that I wanted to do. Trust me, I didn't want to do this at all. <laughs> but... Um, I was finding my strength from you ladies and it's not necessarily a bad thing but it became draining for me um and no I'm not blaming you ladies at all I love you ladies to pieces okay <laughs> what I'm saying is I wasn't involving God enough I wasn't spending enough time with God and being rooted in him so that I can then take what he poured into me and pouring it back into you I was basically pouring into you guys you guys are pouring into me and then I was just going back to focus on DOI and not really focusing on God um so it's it really just makes you wonder where is your stability and your strength come from especially when those the, those moments where you feel like everything is chaotic or you feel like you're growing weak or feeling dry because I definitely felt like a little dry I felt dry spiritually <laughs> but that's because I wasn't rooted in God I was I found myself rooted in other things and I had to realign myself and again you ladies know I talked about it on Instagram and all that <laughs> But um, the question for that, like I said, is going to be, can you ladies see this? Okay. Where does your, oh, my handwriting, my God. You know I'm getting tired when I start writing sloppy. sloppy. Where does your stability and strength come from? And again, I'll repeat what I said um, for that because I think it's really important um to know so the most important part of a tree is a hidden root system that draws up water and nourishment so therefore the most important part of the believer's life our walk is the spiritual root system that draws on the resources and those resources are god jesus and the holy spirit it is your personal relationship that will keep you going it will link you is link you the right word that i want to say that's not the right word that i want to say can't think about the right word but i'm gonna say link you um to god um it will link you to jesus and the holy spirit and then that goes into the second part which says by the rivers of water so the rivers of water is twofold jesus is the living water but then you also have god who is the well that never runs dry so your roots get the nourishment from the living water as well as from the well that never runs dry there's a continual and unlimited source for us within that water, within the rivers of water, but we have to be rooted in that source to get that unlimited continual um, flowing of water. Yes, yes, Kayla. Is it Kayla? I'm, I'm probably saying it wrong. I hope I'm saying it right. If not, correct me. But yes, I agree. I definitely found that I was making um, <clears throat> DOI an idol. Um, and not in a way where I was just worshiping it, because that sounds weird. But, oh, somebody wants to join the group. Hold on, I just saw it. I don't know if you ladies were able to accept them. But definitely to the point where DOI became my daily thing, making Bible studies. And you guys know I had the whole thing set up. God gave me specific things that he wanted me to study with you ladies. But then I completely, in, in trying to prepare those studies and book clubs, I took time away from my personal time my personal time with god my personal devotionals i don't know the last time i did a devotional i mean well i did a devotional recently you guys saw it on instagram but like 
it, it's moments like that where I have to remember that DOI was a gift from God. God gave it to me and he can take it away. Just because he gave it to me does not mean that I need to put it before him. I need him in order to continue to move with DOI. And I found that when I wasn't putting him before DOI, I was drained, <laughs> completely drained. Um, so yes, I'm trying to see, cause I know somebody just requested to join the group. So I wanna make sure that I get them in. Um. I saw it. I don't know what happened to it. So I think somebody approved that person already. I'm sorry. Just. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think someone already approved them. Prayerfully. Hopefully. All right. So <laughs> I'm going to write for this. Where do I want to write that? I'm going to write it on a sticky note. Why not use a cute sticky note? I'm going to take this cute little sticky note. <laughs> I'm going to put verse three so v3 is literally all i'm writing i'm gonna box it and then i'm gonna write jesus is the living water god is the well that never runs dry and then i'm just gonna take that color that i used initially for that and box it so that I know when I stick it on the Bible which verse it goes to. Okay, we almost there. Oh, cross references, excuse me. So I did have cross references. I have cross references everywhere. You guys know how to do with cross references. <laughs> So the first one is Psalms 92 verses 12 through 14 and that says the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree he shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God they shall still bear fruit in old age they shall be fresh and flourishing and then the last one I had was Jeremiah 17 and 8 and that reads where is it for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will see cease from yielding fruit. Um, so those are the two cross references for you ladies. Um, okay. Moving on. Almost there, almost there. Not much long to go, guys. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but um, then it says that bring forth its fruit in its season. So we understand that fruit is basically a reward or a result. So basically abiding in God means that you will consistently flow and bear spiritual fruit, but you will also reap results and rewards and the part where it says in its season really reminds me that everything is fulfilled in its purpose time. We all have to go through different seasons to bear um, to bear specific fruit in our walk. Nothing is immediate. So again, it brings to mind planting a tree. Trees take time to grow. Flowers take time to grow. Fruit on a tree takes time to grow. So there's seasons for everything and we can't rush those. For me, you guys know I talk about this all the time with my um, son's father, fiance, whatever you guys want to call him. <laughs> but you guys, most of you know the story. Um, I've been with him almost nine years, nine years, since 2012. So how many years that is? I can't think. Eight, eight, nine, eight, eight years. I think that's eight. Correct me if I'm wrong. But <laughs> eight years. We've been engaged for seven. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm, yeah, I know I'm always at that point where I'm just like, all right, Lord, let's go. I'm ready to just be married. Like, come on, I'm ready. But I've learned that I can't rush it because in the season that we were in, um, it was pretty much a dry season is what I could call it. We were in a dry season. And um, in that season, a lot of things were taking place. I was getting closer to God. I was I was beginning to walk in my call. I got ordained as an evangelist. <laughs> like, come on. I started DOI. Um, and now I even see more things are happening for the better and is bringing us closer and you know, me still being me in the flesh, I'm just like, all right, I'm ready to move. I'm ready to be one big happy family, live under one roof, be married, change my last name and all that. But 
I have to understand that I have to go through this and there's a purpose time that God has for us to be married. And when we're when we're together in that marriage, it'll be I'm not going to say perfect as in like 100% perfect, but it will be perfect in the eyes of God. Not in the eyes of man, but in the eyes of God. I know a lot of people, like someone had commented on YouTube before about how I just need, we need to just get married. Um, but thinking that way, if that was the case, we would have basically destroyed one another. So I'm grateful that even though we've been together for eight years and engaged for seven, um, that God is taking his time with us, specifically me, um, because I'm very quiet. I'm very reserved. Um, I like to keep things bottled up. And I'm, I'm noticing that a lot of things that I prayed about, a lot of things that I prayed for within my relationship um, is changing for the better. So I think it's, you know, awesome to understand that. But so that brings forth its fruit in its season. Um, where do I want to write this? Because I'm running out of space, but that's okay. So abiding in God. Abiding in God means that we will consistently flow in their fruit everything is fulfilled in its purposed time God has a purpose um, and he has a specific time for everything to take place. For that, I have, again, cross references. So Galatians 5, 22 to 23, that's basically talking about the fruits of the spirit. I'm not going to read that. We should all, well, I would hope everyone knows it. But if not, again, it is Galatians 5, 22 to 23 that talks about the fruit of the spirit. But I will read the other two scriptures. The first one is going to be Matthew 13 and 23. And that says, but he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. Then the last one is going to be John 15 and 5. Again, to the ladies who purchased the notes, I will send that immediately after this. Um, I did find a few errors, so I'm going to have to edit it and then send a mass group, group email out to all of you who purchased. <laughs> but um, 15 and 5. So it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Um, and then further on in verse 7, it says, If you abide in me and my word abides in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. So we have that. Um, so I'm just going to put john 15 is it 15 yeah 15 5 and you guys know i love the book of john we're gonna get through john y'all we're we gonna get there soon soon um we'll take this blue um then it goes to say whose leaf also shall not wither so those who abide in God will not be dry or dead. It brings the questions of how rooted are you in God and are you feeling dry? And this brings me back again to the point I was mentioning before where I felt completely dry because I wasn't getting my time in with God, my personal quality time with God. And because I wasn't getting that quality time, I started to feel dry. And then I began to put my roots in other things um, and I started to wither. And I didn't, I don't, I don't, I didn't like that feeling like at all. It was not good. So, you know, I'm not going to really mark that. But um, again, how rooted are you in God? And are you beginning to feel dry? If you feel dry, you need to really start thinking about um, what it is that's making you feel that way. And is it because you're not spending enough time with God? You will know when you're not spending enough time with God because you'll start to feel it. <laughs> Physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, all that. Okay. <laughs> so then it says, and whatever he does shall prosper. So because of God, we can bring forth good and wonderful things, even in difficult circumstances and situations. Without him, we cannot be prosperous. You cannot prosper outside of God. Simply as that. It's just not possible, okay? It's not. 
Um, so overall, with verse 3, what I'm getting is that stability and productivity are that of a righteous person and God. So moving on to verse 4, it says the ungodly are not so. Strictly put, the things that belong to a righteous person cannot belong to an ungodly person. And again, if we go back, an, an ungodly person is... Do I have it here? Nope, I have it on the paper. Where's the paper? An ungodly person is one who is guilty of sin against God or man, a wicked man, or one who is morally wrong, according to the Hebrew word. Okay? So, um, the ungodly person appears to have more than a righteous person, but they are unstable and unfulfilled. And I had to come to the realization that there are people on Instagram that flaunt a lot. Like they flaunt the good parts of their life. But when you really get to know those Instagram people and you see what their lives are like on the inside, inside their homes, you really understand that they're not stable in their homes. They're unfulfilled. And when I say homes, I mean within themselves, not their like actual household, but um, within themselves. They're unstable. They feel unfulfilled. All the money in the world is not helping them. Um, all the people that they hang out with is not helping them. The nice cars, the fashion, the, the trips, it cannot really keep them stable it doesn't even fill the void um they try to fill that void but it's just not so so the ungodly are not so the things that belong to a righteous person cannot and never will belong to an ungodly person then it says but are like the chafe or the chaff which the wind drives away so i'm going to underline like the chaff which the wind drives away so um chaff again is something worthless but the actual meaning of chaff is chafe chaff. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but it's basically the husk of corn or other seeds separated by winnowing or threshing. So once those husks are taken apart from the corn or whatever else, they become worthless. They become useless. There's no weight to them. There's nothing keeping them there. So basically what this is saying is that the ungodly, they live a life of instability and cannot be of use to God. They are empty. They have no substance. So then it brings the question is, are you empty and without substance? Can adversity easily sway you from God? And then from that, how stable are you? What is stabilizing you? Is it God that's keeping you stable? Or is it something else that you're finding your stability in? For that, we can read Job 21 and 18. And Job was speaking to his friends, if I'm not mistaken, the two friends. I don't remember who they were. But um, it was a discourse on wicked on the wicked that he was saying so job 21 and 18 says they are like the straw before the wind and like chaff that a storm carries away is what he says literally that's what he says um but simply put the wicked the ungodly are unstable and they can never be of use to god now i'm not saying that god can't use them he can use an ungodly person to steer a righteous person in the right way but he cannot fully use an ungodly person for his kingdom. I'm hoping I'm making sense because it makes sense in my head the way I'm saying it. <laughs> but it doesn't sound like it is. But um, I'm going to put ungodly people. I need to get another setup for tomorrow better. Ungodly people live in unstable life um let's go with this coral <laughs> me too i really miss doing these studies um a lot like these were like literally the highlight of my week <laughs> so I'm enjoying the fact that I'm taking the time to go through smaller books until I'm ready to tackle John again because John is too long. It's way too long. But yes, we're almost done. Two more verses and then we're done. Okay. <laughs> so then it says, therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. So basically, because they cannot be of use to God, the ungodly will be found lacking on the day of judgment. I mean, that's as simple as I can put it <laughs> from my understanding. 
Um, then it says, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. So this means that not only will they be found lacking on the day of judgment, but they will be isolated from those who obey the word of God and live accordingly. The righteous person is separated from the ungodly or from the sinners. Okay, we're called to live a specific lifestyle. And those that are ungodly choose to disregard that lifestyle. So they have to then be isolated and separated. And when you're separated from the congregation, you then become separated from God, which is read down in the further verses. So going to verse six, it says, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous. God will preserve and protect his people, his chosen, his children, his daughters, his sons. He knows each of us. And he will never allow us to be harmed beyond repair. So we will go through. We will suffer. It says it in the Bible that we will suffer for the sake of Christ. But the way we suffer and when we suffer will not be beyond his repair. What I mean is no matter what we go through, you guys know my story. If you've seen my testimony videos <laughs> on YouTube with being raped and molested. Those are things that most people cannot come out of especially those who don't know God, they can't come out of, come out of those um, traumatic experiences. They become so wrapped up in it and get depressed. You guys know my story with the depression. You, you guys know those two stories. So um, God didn't allow those things to keep me bound up. Again, I was bound up 10 years in depression. 10 years. 10 long years. <laughs> Probably longer, like I said, because I don't know when it started. But um, definitely over 10 years. And because of me being a daughter of God and because of him knowing me personally and me knowing him, I was able to come out of it. And how, how can I say this? <laughs> um, I was able to come out of it because of who he is to me, me knowing him. So no matter what I go through, no matter what I have to deal with, no matter what I suffer through, it's not beyond God's touch and repairing it. It's not that it's going to be removed from me, but I'm going to be able to come out of that to then minister and testify to other people. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, also, our obedience to him and abiding in him means that we can and will always have peace. Two cross references for that. The first one is Nahum. I think that's how you say his name. Nahum 1 and 7. I can never remember where Nahum is in the Bible. Lord, help me. Here it is. Got it. Ha ha. So Nahum 1 and 7 says, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. So because I trust in God, and because I because I have a relationship with him, and because he knows me, anything that I go through, anything that I have to suffer through, he will help me through it. I will get out on the other end um, successfully. And then John 10 verse 14, and that reads, where is it, where is it? Okay. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I am known by my own. So God knows who I am. He knows everything that was going to happen with my life. Yeah, depression is definitely um, one of those things that a lot of people find hard to deal with. And a lot of people don't understand it. I know that when I was depressed, um, I didn't. I didn't get clinically diagnosed as depressed, okay? I didn't go like to the doctor or anything because doctors start trying to get you pills and all that. I wasn't with that. <laughs> um, but I knew that I was depressed because I was always by myself. I like to stay in my room with the light off. I was listening to all types of stuff. I was hanging out with the wrong types of people. Um, I couldn't sit in church services. And I mentioned this before. I could not sit in church services. I would not go to church. There's some days if I would go, I wouldn't even stay for second service. I'd be like, all right, I'm going home. Like, Depression is a real thing, and a lot of people don't believe that it's a real thing. It is definitely real. It is definitely a hard place to get out of. Um, it's not too hard for God to get you out of it. But with me, if you saw my testimony story, I personally had to get fed up with being depressed. And the way that I did that was my mom bought me a Bible, and I started reading the Word. The first book of the Bible that I read was John. That's why John is literally my favorite book of the Bible because it pulled me out of my depression because it really talks about who God is, not God, excuse me. It talks about who Jesus is and not so much of what he does. We know what he does, but it really gave me a more personal connection with Jesus and my personal relationship with him. So I definitely would say study through the book of John. Um, it is hard. Depression is definitely a struggle. I find sometimes that um, depression is like, it's like a familiar spirit. That sometimes I find I 
feel like I'm slipping back, then I have to immediately snap myself up out of it because I know that God delivered me from that. So it's no re it's no need for me to fall back into those states. So it's definitely a mind thing. It's definitely a spiritual thing. It's definitely a physical, emotional thing. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely a bondage. It re it really is. I was bound up like I said for ten years. It was a struggle. Like <laughs> I gave up dance. I stopped doing all the things that I enjoyed. Like it it was crazy. Um, but you can get out of it. You personally just have to be fed up. Number one, you personally have to be fed up with it. Like, I mean, tired. And there's a difference between being like, okay, I'm over it. But like, I mean, I got, I personally was like, I can't do this anymore by myself. I had to go into the word deeply and really steep myself in the word of God. And I'm not, I'm not saying that that's not what you're doing, Irene. So don't take that wrong. I'm just saying in a general statement, <laughs> but, um, and then I also had leaders that consistently prayed for me. My bishop and my pastor, they are literally like my second parents. They have been with me for 10 years, over 10 years. Um, they literally prayed and traveled for me in service, out of service. They would check up on me. So it's definitely a matter of you having people around you and you yourself really wanting to get out of it. Because there were times I'd be like, all right, I'm going to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Help me out of this. Like I'd pray, but I wasn't really feeling it. It wasn't until, like I said, I, I was like, I can't do this anymore. I can't because I felt like if I didn't get out of it, I was going to kill myself. I have a suicide story coming. You guys will hear about that soon. Um, not now, of course. It was like back in those times in the bondage of depression. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's 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 a, it's a tough thing. It's a tough thing. Um, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to figure out where I was. <laughs> okay. So... Yeah, God knows who you are and he can pull you out of anything. Um, it might seem hard, but God, you're not beyond repair for God. God can repair anything. He can take the ashes and turn them into something beautiful. Um, so then the final part of that, it says, the way of the, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So there's basically no happy ending for the ungodly. They will continue to walk down a destructive path until they come to an end and they are forever separated from the father when you're completely separated from god there is no second chance and i'm not saying as believers we don't get second chances god gives his children second and third chances now you're gonna have to reap the you know you're gonna have to deal with the consequences down the line but we get those chances for those who are ungodly though they don't get those chances like us um they don't have the ability to seek god because once he cuts you off he cuts you off that's it and that's not something any of us any of us want so again with this let me zoom out a little bit for you guys but basically psalms one i have this sheet that says what we learn and i'm just going to read through exactly what it is that i got out of it and i'll show you ladies on the camera let me move this out the way so basically the righteous are affirmed and lifted up by God, but the ungodly are brought down in shame before they are ended. As long as we abide in God's word and live according to it, we can get through anything. But if we choose to stray, we will suffer. It is a given. We must stand firm in God. Godly living. And this this right here is like, it makes me want to preach a whole sermon. I'm just saying. But <laughs> it says godly living is birthed out of knowing God personally. You cannot live... Okay, so basically, apart from a relationship with the Father and the Son, having and having the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, one cannot live a life that pleases God. Without God, you cannot live godly. Did I say that right? Without God, you cannot live godly. I think I said that right. <laughs> um, in order to live a godly life, you have to know God. You have to have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. You have to know Jesus. You have to have a personal relationship. Not a relationship that was built on from what your mother had not a relationship that your leaders built for you that's how it was for me back like you know a few years ago um i had a relationship based on what my mother told me what my senior pastor my bishop told me what i learned from my previous church it wasn't until i said you know what i want a personal relationship with god on my own that i was able to begin i was able to start living godly the things that i was doing that was ungodly things that were not godlike were then wiped away from me, cleansed away from me. Um, then I said that the essence of wisdom is to know and do the will of God. And the last part was stability and fruitfulness belong to those who focus on obedience to God continually. So that is pretty much it. 
for Psalms 1. The righteous versus the ungodly, however you want to put it. <laughs> it's just literally a comparison between a righteous person and an ungodly person. Again, this is available. It's $2 if you want the document. Um, It's five pages. You guys know I have lots of notes. I, I like notes, okay? We like notes. But um, that is it. Do you guys have any questions? Anything you want to discuss before I log off? I will be on tomorrow at 10 a.m. And I'll be going through Psalm 8 on tomorrow, um, which is called The Glory of the Lord in Creation. Again, I have the schedule posted up so you guys can see which Psalms I'll be doing on which days. I was initially going to do this every week, twice a week. But then I really had to think about it and God was like, no, that's too much because I'm doing too much. <laughs> so I think for these first two weeks, I think I'm doing them back to back. But I think starting in May, I'm alternating between Fridays for one week, Saturdays for another week. You are so welcome, Kelly. <laughs> but um, yeah, I definitely wanted to, oh, first of all, before I do that, let me stick my sticky notes on here so I don't lose them. That's one. Um, but um, eh. If you guys are looking for a journaling Bible, let me zoom back out. Can I zoom back out? Okay. If you are looking for a journaling Bible, like I said, I love this Bible. Um, it is the New King James Journal of the Word Bible. They have the King James translation. They also have, I believe, the NIB. It does come in those three translations. Um, it is from Thomas Nelson. We know I love Thomas Nelson. They have different editions of this. The one that I use for my personal study time is this one, the teal. Floral. It's the teal floral cloth bound. Um, and Alicia know that this, I, I mentioned before in the video how I like this design, but it was starting to fray. So she purchased this one for me, which is the updated version. Um, it's the comfort print and it's this gorgeous. Let me just show you guys. Because I was so shocked that she had got this for me. Sorry about the ring light. <laughs> but it's this gorgeous brown and like I was too excited and really wanted to like break it in. So I'm using it for the Psalms especially since i already studied most of the psalms in my other bible so yeah but this is a great bible to use um again the zebra mount liner highlighters i love these let me show you guys bleed through looks a little bad on here because i have all my lights on it <laughs> so let me show you in the other bible what it looks like with bleed through um here's john so I'm studying, I'm, I'm going through John, as you can see, and um, bleed through is not terrible, like, at all. I love these highlighters. You might have bleed through. It depends on the amount of pressure you're putting with the highlighters. I definitely suggest the highlighters. I definitely suggest this Bible. Again, the lines are, 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 are faint, so you can, if you're into the journaling Bible where you're drawing, great for that. Um, you guys can see here, they show you how you can draw, or you can literally just write. I prefer to write you guys know that's my method i love it um <laughs> but yeah that is it for this evening tomorrow morning at 10 a.m i will be on and i will be doing psalms 8 so i actually have to study that tonight <laughs> pray for me um i'm gonna study that in a few and psalms 8 only has a total of nine verses so i don't have anything else going on church wise so i should be able to just come on and get it done so yeah, but um, I'm definitely going to end it here. Quickly going to pray this out. Lord, I thank you for it. We thank you for this time together. We thank you for the fellowship, for being able to study your word. We thank you for the chance to really dive in and understand what it means to be a righteous child versus an ungodly person. Lord, I pray that we take what we learned tonight and apply it to our lives on a daily basis. And that when we come back tomorrow, we're able to dive deeper into another psalm um to just edify ourselves and grow and mature in our walk and in your word amen <laughs> so i am going to lock off anyone who has paid for the notes that will be sent out right about now and i'll see you guys 10 a.m tomorrow pray for me because i still gotta study psalms 8 yes so i will see you ladies tomorrow bye